Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. In this one I'll be going through how I made the petticoat for Briar Rose and also I should just mention that I didn't actually make this petticoat from scratch. Um, it was originally a dress from an op shop. If you scroll back far enough on my videos you'll see the video about how I made Gwen's petticoat. It's the exact same petticoat. Um, I just chopped off the top part of it so there is no bodice part. I also got rid of the zip and I made it a drawstring waist closure thing instead. So that's what you see here. I didn't actually film any of that but what I will be filming or what I have filmed and will be showing you in this video is how I shortened this petticoat temporarily because I am using it in multiple costumes. Um, so I've got a shorter length for when I wear it with my Briar Rose costume, which is more of a T-length dress, and then I um, have it set to the longest length when I wear it with my Aurora, my Midnight Masquerade Aurora costume, which is a full-length gown. So what I am doing here is marking where I want the other waistline to be. I don't want to say the new waistline because it's always going to have two different waistlines depending on how I want to wear it. Um, but yeah, the alternate waistline measurement. Um, so I'm just marking about five or so inches down from the actual waistline and I'm marking that with chalk. Once I marked out where I wanted my alternate waistline to be, I then pinched the fabric like this and made a fold along that chalk marking line. Um, and I also took care to make sure that I pressed, well I didn't actually press all the seam allowances open, but I'm folding the seam allowances open and making sure I sew across the chalk line like that. So I'm just going to go along and follow the chalk line marking to create a new drawstring channel for the alternate waistline. So I'm just putting this under the machine now and yeah, basically as I said, following the chalk line to create that new drawstring channel. And I basically sewed all along the chalk line and I did make sure to leave Actually, no, I didn't have to make sure to leave an opening because there's already an opening in the back of the dress. There is a slit where the zip used to be for the dress, but I pulled that out and that is where the ties pop out, where they can be tied into a bow. So once I had the channel all sewn, I then took out the existing cotton tape from the topmost drawstring channel um, and then I do this thing where I put in the safety pin, attach the safety pin to the edge of the cotton tape and feed it through the drawstring channel. So I'm starting at the back opening or front opening depending on how you where, where you want this opening slit to be um, and yeah just feed the cotton tape through that channel all the way to the other side until you can 
pull it like a drawstring. Um, with the seam allowances though, um, sometimes the seam allowance did bunch up as I was trying to put the cotton tape within it. Um, just patiently work through it and you'll get there. You'll get past the seam allowances. So here you can see the cotton tape has now been inserted all along that new or alternate waistline and the ties can match at the back or the front of the skirt and you can tie them into a bow there. So that is the length of the petticoat altered and when I put the petticoat on this is how it looks. There is a bit of bunching at the top um, which I don't mind honestly because the dress that I wear this with um, it actually helps that there's quite a bit of volume at the waist or just under the waist um, because it really helps to proof out the skirt um, so I really don't mind that um, but just be aware if you are doing this to uh, an existing dress or skirt that you have um, you might want to think about whether or not the costume that you're wearing it for or the dress that you're wearing it for um, would actually benefit from this extra volume around the waist or it would ruin your look. Um, the reason why the um, top part of my petticoat is quite bunched up is because the way the skirt was originally cut it's an A-line shape so towards the waist that fabric is actually um, it's actually smaller than the fabric beneath it so it really um, it can't it has nowhere to go it's um, it's forced to bunch up that way I just tuck it in under and that works fine and sometimes I don't even bother tucking it in I just leave it flopping about and then put the skirt over the top and it looks completely fine now I'm moving on to attaching lace to the bottom of this petticoat so the dress design that I was basing my briar rose off um, has a lace um, peeking through at the hem of the skirt and I wanted to emulate that. Um, rather than making a whole new skirt I thought I may as well just add lace to my existing petticoat. So that is what I did. I was actually fortunate enough to find this lace fabric at a garage sale. I think I bought it for $12 and I believe there was five meters of this lace um, which was perfect um, for the length of my petticoat. Maybe it was five pieces because it was already cut into these strips. I can't remember. It was either five meters or five pieces. Either way it was a lot of lace because the hem of this petticoat is massive. So with the lace what I did was made sure that all of my lace pieces were pretty much the same. Um, so I matched them on top of one another and then cut off the excess netting tulle fabric at the top of the lace because this seemed to vary with each of my lace pieces. So I did this by matching up the um, finished edge of the lace, so basically the bottom edge of the lace to make sure that that's all even and then pin that all down before I go ahead and trim off the top edge. Actually, I'm actually uh, I'm actually getting ahead of myself here. I'm not trimming off the top edge at the moment. What I'm doing is matching up the seams of the lace so I can stitch them together. And how I'm stitching these together is using French seams so they don't fray. So what I just did there was pin wrong sides together of the lace. Now the lace is basically the same on both sides so it doesn't really have a wrong or a right side so pin the lace together. Um, sew along that line as I'm doing here and then once that seam had been sewn I trimmed away the excess seam allowance so I trimmed quite closely to the seam um, but obviously not close enough to cut through it and this is just to reduce the bulkiness um, within the seam. 
After I had finished trimming off the excess seam allowance, I would then turn the lace so the, let me get this right, the right sides, the right sides would be touching together, I think, no, yes, yes, the right sides would be touching together. So essentially I'm encasing that seam allowance that I just trimmed within another seam. So this is what a French seam is. You sew one seam, you trim it down so the seam allowance is quite narrow, and then you flip the fabric and then sew another seam to encase the raw edges. So I've just sewn the French seam and now you can see that there are no raw edges um, on the lace. So that's really good from a durability standpoint and it also looks quite nice and neat. So I continue to do that same thing for all of my lace pieces. So I just sewed two here. Um, there's another three lace pieces, I'm pretty sure. So repeat that whole process for all of my other pieces. Once I had finished sewing all of my lace panels together, I just quickly laid it along the hem of my skirt to make sure I had enough lace, which I did, so that was great. I finally closed the loop of my lace strip by sewing up the last pieces together with the same French seam that I had been doing all along. So that's what I'm doing here. And after I've sewn this final French seam, I should just have one big giant loop of lace. So with this giant loop of lace, I made sure that all of the edges, the bottom edge of the lace had been matched up and then chopped off the excess netting tool stuff at the top edge of the lace to make sure that all of my lace pieces are even. Next up, I had to pin all of this lace to my bottom tier of my petticoat. And to do this, I started by pinning the middle points, so the center front, the center back, the sides, and then from there, I started pinning the middle points of those and continued doing that until it was evenly dispersed across the bottom tier of my petticoat. So once I had put in the essential pins that I needed, actually I think I ended up just pinning across the whole thing, um, I then sewed where all of these pins were and the way I'm sewing it is uh, sewing it so that, like, think of the lace facing, not facing, um, but like the bottom edge of the lace is pointing upwards towards the um, waist of the skirt. So that way when the stitching is done, um, that lace can then flip over on top of the stitching and then that way the raw edge is sort of hidden beneath the lace itself because the lace flips over on top of the raw edge, if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Like here you can see the bottom hem of the petticoat is towards the right of my sewing machine foot and the way I'm sewing the lace 
is that the bottom edge of the lace is pointing upwards towards the waistline of my petticoat. So once I take this away from the sewing machine, the lace can then just flop down and there won't be any raw edges. I'm, I'm hoping that makes sense. If you're having trouble understanding that, let me know in the comments and I'll try and explain it there. So basically I just pulled the lace down and now this is how the petticoat looks, lying on the ground. Um, I really love how the lace just pops. Um, the lace is more of a white colour, whereas the petticoat is more cream, so it really has that nice contrast between the two different colours, if you would call them that. Um, yeah, and here is how the petticoat looks when put on and it's got a really nice swoosh twirl to it um, so that's really fun so the length of it I was trying to have an asymmetrical hemline where towards the back it is actually longer than in the front um, and this is based off the Briar Rose designer doll anniversary collection design um, yeah so that's that, and here is a little close-up of the lace. I think it looks really pretty. You can see that the hem of my petticoat extends just a little bit beyond the lace, which I wasn't intending on having that happen, but I think it's for the better because then the bottom edge of my lace won't get super dirty. So here's a sneak peek of what's to come in a future video. So these are the two materials that I'm thinking of using, or I was, I did use. I'm not thinking about using them anymore because I've already made the skirt, but um, there's this beautiful burgundy um, fabric and then this also burgundy fabric, um, but with embroidered designs on it. And these are the fabrics that I used to make Briar Rose's skirt. So if you want to see how the skirt is made for this costume, um, subscribe because the video is going to come in a few weeks. Uh, yeah. Oh, and thank you to Kira Lee Cosplay for um, letting me use her fabric stash. Um, these two fabrics are from Kira Lee. So thank you very much. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't have been able to make this costume. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, if you liked it, please give it a like, thumbs up, leave a comment, um, check out my Instagram for photos because I'm always posting photos and things over there. And until next time, stay creative.